This is the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with your host, Vicki Davis. Thank you, Tara, for sponsoring today's show, a new tool to help teachers streamline their biggest burdens and create more time. Stay tuned at the end of the show to learn how to get your free account and about the powerful tracking abilities for teachers and special education teachers. So I'm so excited about today. We're going to be talking to Liz Kolb, who is Clinical Associate Professor of Educational Technologies at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I know Liz from when she authored Toys to Tools and Connecting Student Cell Phones to Education and a lot of things about cell phones, but today we are going to totally focus on the Triple E framework. A lot of folks were talking about this at ISTE. I attended virtually this year and we want to just give an overview, Liz, of what is the Triple E framework? Yeah, thanks for having me. So I developed the Triple E framework about 10 years ago, and I originally developed it for my pre-service teachers at Michigan because they were having trouble understanding how to take TPAC into the classroom, like what that sound felt like. They, they just really struggled with what does a lesson look like that has all the TPAC. So I realized that they needed something less theoretical and more concrete. So I developed the Triple E framework in order to fill that space. And the framework is, it takes research around ed technology and pretty much puts it into nine questions that you should be asking when you develop a lesson. There's three questions around engagement, three around enhancement, and three around extension. And it's all focused first on the learning and the fact that there are learning goals and thinking about how the technology is engaging students in the learning goals, enhancing the learning goals, and ending those learning goals through this nine question framework. And in the end, you get a score. And the score tells you if you're doing a nice job connecting the learning goals and the technology choices and the pedagogy around that, or if maybe you need to make some different decisions to strengthen that connection. I love it because several of the ISTE presentations I saw used your framework. You and I have been around long enough that people fall in love with the shiny in the new. But isn't it, doesn't it come down to how we use it in the classroom? And that's what every single piece of research that I combed through when I was developing this framework said. Ultimately, it said that there's no such thing as a bad tech tool or a great tech tool. It really comes down to the pedagogical choices and instructional strategies the teacher's using in conjunction with that tool. So you could have two studies on like Seesaw, and one study would show that students improved in their growth, in their learning growth, and another study might have the opposite. And it had nothing to do with the fact that they chose Seesaw. It really had to do with those small instructional moves that the teachers made around it, which which once again shows us how important the teacher is when it comes to the lessons with technology. Liz, do you ever get any pushback on the framework? You know what? I haven't gotten much pushback on it. And I think it's because this particular framework is very practitioner-based. And it really tries to bring the research to practice in a way that's digestible and easy to do. And I think sometimes in our my research world that I'm in now, we tend to stay in the clouds where we make everything very lengthy and wordy and difficult to assess. And I think what I've tried to do with this framework is to make it so that you can get to the point where you never even have to look at it, just in your brain, you can quickly go through each of the E's and see if the lesson's there. So I've actually gotten more thank yous than pushback that, oh, this is what we needed for for tech coaches working with teachers or for an administrative walkthrough. I know a lot of schools are using it that way as a way for the administrators to have conversations with teachers about what they're doing with technology, knowing that it's researched, informed, and evidence-based. I remember years ago talking to Bernie Dodge about the misuse of web quests, (laughs) and he kept seeing how sometimes it was misused. Have you ever seen the triple E framework not used in a way that you really intended it to be used? I have seen people try to use it to evaluate like a whole curriculum. (laughs) And sometimes the curriculum didn't even have technology involved in it. And this is really specifically when it's lessons and and tech tools involved. So it's not something you can just use where technology is not involved in it. So I have seen it used that way. And I wouldn't, I would not advise. Okay. So fill in the blank, Liz. I wish every teacher and administrator understood blank about educational technology. I wish that they understood that there's no such thing as a 
bad tool when it comes to education technology. In other words, just because it's an older tool doesn't mean it can't be really effective. And just because it's the shiny newest tool does not mean it's effective. So I wish every administrator knew not to evaluate a teacher based on the newness or the popularity of a tool that they're using, rather the pedagogy that they're using in conjunction with the tool, whether it's old or new. And sometimes I see research with tools where basically they're over-promising the tool's ability to deliver, and it does come back to the pedagogy. I would think that might bother you some because you, you see the studies. The first thing you do is you, you create the tool, then you get another round of funding, you fund the research, and then you tell everybody that your tool is going to solve blank. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I don't think we actually, I think we have lots of tools. We have plenty of tools now, and it truly is about the instructional design. And if you don't understand how students learn and how students, how to create interventions for students when they're struggling with things, those kind of basic educational teaching and learning practices, which is a skill. And if you don't understand that, no matter how the tool use you have, you're never going to really get the learning growth that you want ultimately. We need teachers to really understand how students learn best and then add the technology to it rather than trying to have the technology somehow replace a teacher that maybe doesn't have those skills and ability because it's not going to work. I know you observe a lot of teachers. What does it take to get you excited about a class and what's going on in the class? One of the things I always look for is I look that they they are really putting that learning goal first that they are telling me this is what we wanted to do they're giving students agency around that they're having them come in and say oh we're interested in learning about I had one teacher I wrote about in a book where he his students all wanted to learn about the Flint water crisis and it blew him away and so then he started using technology tools that made sense for that learning goal connecting with another classroom through Skype and co-writing through like Google Docs and so the tools fit in with enhancing what he wanted to do with the learning goal rather than jumping in and saying, we're going to make an iMovie. He went to the students and said, what do we want to learn about? And I think that's the most important thing. So when you think about where education technology is heading, we've got a lot of convergence happening. We have of artificial intelligence converging with augmented reality and virtual reality and all. And of course, AI is the big buzzword now. As you see us moving forward because a lot of people are promising big things with AI. I actually read in a book recently that the answer to the teacher shortage was VR. Like I literally read that and I'm sitting here thinking, so as you see all these technologies converging uh, and as people evaluate something like say Grammarly, which gives feedback to students as they make those mistakes, do you think the framework needs to evolve or how do you evaluate when the technology is actually teaching a little piece of the lesson? I actually designed the framework so it's not it's not about a particular tool in time. So it really comes down to we want students to meet learning targets, right? And that's not going to change whether we're using AI or VR or some kind of new emerging tech. We still are going to want students to meet those learning targets. So you can use this framework to evaluate a lesson with adaptive software or the latest VR goggles that classrooms are using. And ultimately, it still comes down to the learning goal. And if you're using VR goggles and it doesn't make sense for the learning goal, that's going to show up in the framework. And it's going to cause you hopefully to think, is this the right tool to meet this goal? Or maybe we need to modify the pedagogy. Right? Yeah, there's a lot of big promises out there. And ultimately, it comes down to the teacher understanding how students learn best and knowing the pedagogy and being able to select tools that will meet the learning goal and good instructional design. Teachers and administrators are listening to you talk. A lot of folks already know about the AAA framework, but others may not. Where are the best resources and places to go so that they can jump in and really focus on the pedagogical use of education technology because it's really all about how you use it and how you teach with it. Yeah, and I think that's what a lot of schools are looking for now, especially once they got all these tools with the COVID pandemic. So I have an open resource, tripleframework.com, where it has the Triple E framework on there you can use. It has some information about how it was, some case studies in there, it has contact information for me as well. And then I also have in beta version, I want to emphasize that, the Triple E PLN, which we're starting to develop as a way to build some community around this and 
that's still in progress. So if you have tips on that, you can also let me know. But those are two great places to get started with. Excellent. Are you seeing a lot of conversations happen in the PLN? They're starting and we're trying to figure out what's the best way to organize those conversations. So we actually are doing a bunch of focus groups right now. That's another thing that people can get involved with if they're interested in weighing in on that. So Liz Kolb, the Triple E framework will include everything in the show notes. I was just so impressed, Liz, with the presentations I saw that would say, okay, now we're evaluating this use of technology using the Triple E framework. And I don't think it, you know, it's been a couple years since I've been to an ISTE, but I don't think I've seen it in as many sessions as I saw it this year, which was like, oh, that's great. It's getting traction. Do you feel that way? Do you feel like it's finally getting traction? I do. And it's, it's music to my ears that you say. It just makes me smile for the day. I actually got a lot of texts and email from friends and colleagues that were at ISTE saying, oh, you're, they're talking about your framework in this session or they're singing your praises of the Learning First book in this session. So that was the first time I felt like at the ISTE conference that there was a lot of conversation around the framework. I think in the past it been, if I presented, they talked about it, but so that was very exciting to me. And I'm glad to hear so many K-12 districts using it, not just higher education, because my goal was get it into the hands of practitioners. Yeah, and it's just very practical. Thank you for being on the show, Liz, and I hope that anyone listening that wants to know more about the framework will check out all your resources. Thanks. Tara stands for the Teacher Assistant for Resources and Administration, which keeps tools, resources, lessons, IEPs, and meetings tracked in one place. It also includes vetted resources that you can download and use in your classroom immediately. As I reviewed this product, I've seen special education teachers and organizations raving about how Tara has helped them organize IEP progress, meetings, and result tracking. Tara is free for up to five people to work together as a team or just for you to use in your classroom to organize your lesson plans and find more resources. Go to coolcatteacher.com forward slash Tara to sign up for your free account. You've been listening to the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast. If you like this program, you can find more at coolcatteacher.com. If you wish to see more content by Vicki Davis, you can find her on Facebook and Twitter under Cool Cat Teacher. Thank you for listening.